Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking at what armor to use in patch 0.14. Everything has changed with the new plate and hitbox rework so let's get started with the inbuilt armors. These are the closest to the old system with set coverage across them as they don't have the ability to swap plates in and out. As per the testing so far, these ones work the same as old armor did regarding damage, penetration and blunt damage when it stops around, so the only real change here is some armor coverage differences. For example, out of the old class 2s, the Packer and the Module 3M come with side armor, whereas the 6B2 Flora does not. I don't think this matters too much because, well, it's class 2 and it only protects the lower part of the body, which is the stomach hitbox anyway, but I suppose it prevents you getting blasted from the side by a shotgun scaff. As far as I'm aware currently, the individual pieces of armor still respect the old material system, so the Packer and the Module 3M are pure Aramid, whereas the 6B2 Flora is titanium like it used to be. You can check this by mouse overing the inbuilt armor. This makes the Packer technically the highest effective durability, the Module 3M in the middle and the Flora in last, because we have to remember the material modifiers that tell us the real durability. However, from level 1 the Flora is one of the few that you can buy in cash, and given it's so cheap this is probably the best pick if you have nothing else and no traders unlocked, because the extra durability on the Packer, again because it's class 2, is probably not necessary. For the Tarkov numbers nerds out there, something quite interesting has happened to the armor modifiers. These are specified by the destructibility table on the wiki and they've been changed for the first time in a couple of years. The difference is a flat 25% decrease in the destructibility figures which corresponds to a one-third increase in effective durability. This means that if an armor has the same durability points now as it did last wipe, that armor will be 33% more durable than it was before. After the cheap class 2s, we have the class 3 inbuilt armors. These are the Untar, the Kora Kulon, the 6B5-60 in Yule Rig, and the DRD Packer. The Kora Kulon only has armor on the front and back, whereas the Untar and DRD have the side armor as well. Our first rig, the 6B5 Yule, is also our first armor with a very new important protection zone, the neck. As the neck hitbox is part of the head, clearly it's critical to think about protecting this, as the area that you can be one-shot in has increased quite a lot. The 6B5-16 Yule only has class 2 on the neck area, but this will prevent low-grade pistol rounds and shotgun buckshot from killing you if it hits there. The neck armor on this one protects both the front and the back, as you can see in the armor areas which lists both the throat, which is the front side hitbox, and also neck, which is the rear side hitbox. Generally speaking, I think neck protection is going to be pretty important, but against players it will be hard to fix, simply because of the typically low armor classes on the armor there. The Yule has groin protection as well, but this is lower priority due to covering the stomach slash legs area, neither of which are as critical. It's just a nice to have if there's no additional downside. A very important point to note here though is that the Yule has class 3 on the front only, the back is class 2. This is quite a stealth nerf for those who used to like using it in the past, and it makes you very vulnerable from behind. So of these, by far the cheapest is the Untar using the Max Energy Barter, as this only costs 2 cans now but you can only do it once, the worst overall durability, a terrible move speed modifier, and is bright blue. If you're just grabbing something for class 3 all around protection, and can pair it with a sizable rig to cover the colour, it can be okay, but if you have the choice, I think one of the others is probably better. The Yule is best if you're face tanking scavs a lot, and can be bought after completing shootout picnic on Prapor 2, and the Kora Kulon or DRD armors are probably better against early game player ammo, which will probably go through the class 2 neck piece anyway, such as 9mm PST. Ultimately, which one you pick is up for you to decide, based on how you play. The Kora Kulon is on Ragman 1 as a barter for a Raven, or Prapor 1 for 47k after completing search mission. There are two more inbuilt only armors, this time at class 4, which are the old classics, the 6B3TM, better known as the Rat Rig for its popularity in previous patches, and the better version of the Yule, the 6B15. The 6B3TM has also taken quite a serious nerf, with class 4 on the front only, as the rear armor is now only class 2, whereas the 6B515 is class 4 all over the body, including class 2 neck armor as well. Both of these are quest locked on Ragman 2, the 6B3TM behind Database 2, and the Yule behind Ballet Lover, but they both drop on scabs regularly, so are readily purchasable on the flea market, and I think of the two, the Yule is pretty strong, with its class 4 all around, and the neck armor as well. I've been using this one quite a lot, and the only main downside is really the high weight at 12.2 kilos. So now that we've looked at the inbuilt armors, it's time to move on to the properly new stuff of armor with replaceable plates. There are some of these available early on, and how it works is the traders sell both some armor and some plates, but the armors themselves come in a default format. I don't think there are any empty rigs on the vendors at all. 
So to complement this, BSG added back all armors to the flea market, but you can't sell class 5 or 6 front or rear plates. So outside of armors with class 4 plates, most of them on the flea are empty. This works really well because on the modular armors, there aren't any with a higher rating than class 3 on the soft armor parts. I think that the flea will end up being an important source for base rigs once it calms down a bit, but everyone's currently trying to scam sell slicks with no plates in them for 200k plus to other people who might not realize what has happened. With a class 3 base and no plates, the slick on its own is just a glorified Kura Coulon. One small quirk is that currently you can sell class 5 and 6 side plates on the flea market, but I don't think this matters to be honest because the side armor just isn't that important. At level 1, there are two classic barters, the 6B13 one for a propane and the horse and pompon hat for a press armor. 6B13 comes with a wide class 2 soft armor layer with neck and groin included and a pretty big steel class 3 front plate, but no back plate as standard. You can buy this separately from Prapor 2 for only 12k, which is the 6B23-2 ballistic plate back, but it can go out of stock sometimes. Strangely enough, this plate is actually class 4, so you end up with class 3 on the front and class 4 on the back, which is a bit weird. If there was some way to get a class 4 at the front as well, it might have been an insanely early choice, but class 3 max is a little bit too low given the price of propanes in the early days of a patch. As for the press armor, this comes with class 3 plates at the front and the back over the top of class 2 soft armor again. Although we don't get the groin protection, we do get the neck hitbox which is way more impactful and the sides come with it for free as well. But by far the most interesting thing about the press is that it takes most of the armor plates in the game and it has two slots for side plates too. This means that you can technically go onto the flea and buy level 4 plates, for example the 6B33 plate for the front or the monoclete plate for either the front or the back and slot them right into the press vest to get class 4. There's a new craft for the press in the level 1 lavatory too, requiring an aramid, a ripstop and one of the Zhuk 3 plates that it comes with. This is also barterable from Prapple 1 for a grand juice, so there's already a lot of options here early on. The only thing that concerns me about the press in its default configuration is that the front plate seems to be missing an armour area and it's not listed on the dropdown either, so maybe it's a visual bug, but perhaps avoid using it with the class 3 default plate for now. The other one that I've seen sold out a lot is the Karasa on Ragman 2. This is only 51k and is similar to the Press in that it takes a lot of different plates, not quite as many as the Zhuk but still a decent selection, however there are no slots for side plates. We get class 3 front and back armour plates with class 2 soft elsewhere, including the neck, so these two are pretty similar, although the standard plates that come with the Karasa seem to be slightly bigger in their surface area. I'm still to check if this makes an actual difference or if the front plate hitbox is the same for all plates, but given that you can buy the Karasa in cash and mod it from there, it's another alternative for customization. What's funny about both of these armors is that you can surprise people if you find a class 5 or 6 plate, because no one expects those previously class 3 armors to tank a huge amount of damage, and because it's quite unusual, if you do die, people still aren't in the best of habits yet to check the plate ratings. Often, they'll just look at the base armor itself, so you should get the plates back more often in insurance than with a higher tier carrier if you've customized it yourself. The first native class 4 armor that you can get from the traders is the 6B13 after completing the quest audit from Ragman 1. This only costs 64k in cash and comes with level 4 front and back plates with class 2 soft elsewhere including the neck, sides and groin, which in my opinion is a pretty good deal. Because this one now has armor steel plates with aramid soft armor rather than ceramic as it used to, this is a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing. It both has more durability and is incredible to repair, with usually a cheap price on the flea as well. Most of the rest of the level 4 armors are locked off up a bit higher, and until we get to the late game armors that come with class 5 plates, most of these other ones are very similar, i.e. class 4 plates front and back with class 2 elsewhere. However, there is one exception, which is the Thor concealable armor. You have to forgo neck protection to buy this, but it's the only armor that comes with class 4 plates whilst having a class 3 soft armor around it. This gets unlocked after database part 1 and costs 2 slim diaries so isn't that expensive really at around 70k. You can also buy it off the flea. I need to do some more work on the whole layered armor situation but at least in theory having class 3 under class 4 should be really strong especially against bullets that are on the fringe of penning like M856A1 or 545BT. Even if the class 4 plate fails, the damage and pen reduction on the bullets should give the class 3 a decent chance of catching it afterwards, doubling up the protection in a powerful way. As I said, I need to go and test this a bit more in depth to see the effect, but if my instinct is right here, it could be quite good. Though ultimately, the choice comes down to deciding between an inbuilt armor, which has coverage over a greater proportion of the body at a higher armor class, or a modular armor with potentially better protection on the center of mass. 
The main difference from the testing so far is that the inbuilt armors give blunt damage when you get hit as per the old armor system, whereas if you get a failed penetration on a modular plate you take no damage at all. My favourite inbuilt armour is the 6 b 5 Ulay with class 4 on the main armour and class 2 neck protection at the same time. Do bear in mind though that the inbuilt armour on this is ceramic so it won't repair very well just like in the old system so it's only good for a small number of fights. For the more modular armors, I think it's hard to beat the 6B13 early on. Audit is a pretty early Ragman quest, although in fairness that does mean at least level 17, so if you do buy it from the flea market, just be careful that it does actually have plates in it before you go ahead. As tempting as the Thor is with class 4 over the top of class 3, I'm not sure if I can justify the lack of neck protection. This increases the size of the one-shot deaths by a pretty large margin, but it might be worthwhile if you're specifically hunting PMCs. On higher level maps where players tend to be using higher pen ammo where the class 2 wouldn't save you around the neck anyway, maybe it's worth it. By the way, we've just dropped a new album called Phoenix over on Spotify in conjunction with Low Wave Records who help make music for content creators to use for free. Listening to the music over on Spotify does actually help to support the channel and you're going to be hearing some of this in the background of my videos here. If you're a creator yourself, you can also use it in the background of your streams for free. There's no DMCA or copyright takedowns on any of this music at all. The next up, go and check out the full video of armor testing done so far with more to come in the future. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons and as always, have fun in your raids. Thank <laughs> you.